Hello and welcome to part 7 here on the Hearts of Iron tutorial for complete beginners where we are playing through the game as Germany. We're going to take over half the world and you get to learn how to play the game in its totality. Although, of course, it takes uh, more than five minutes as I'm sure you will have realised or you wouldn't be watching this. I'd also like to give a, a little shout out to Kiwi before we start or Kiwi Nurse. Hello, how are you doing? My friend from Germany, as it happens, I say friend, he was somebody who left a comment very early on uh, in me making YouTube videos, gave a lot of support and encouragement and continues to do so to this day. So as well as thanking Kiwi, I'd also like to thank everybody else who's left a message of support, a comment, a like, whatever, because when you're creating videos where you're, or tutorials where you're trying to help people, uh, learn how to play a game or, or whatever it happens to be in Photoshop, whatever. Um, it's like all that you get is you're talking into a microphone, hello, and into a camera or maybe, maybe not a camera. And so in the moment of you doing it, you get literally nothing back. But uh, what you get back as a reward is, is you know, in the days and weeks that follow, every so often, I'll you know, I'll take a look on my phone, I'll go through the comments and I will literally see every single comment that somebody left. And it's like, you know, that's nice to have been appreciated by so many people. And so, thank you, if that's you. But for now, let's crack on with it then, part seven. So here we go. Uh, starting on or around the 10th of June, 1936. I hope you're there. We've still got our generals training. We are going to go back to the F1. Can hear, really hear the wind blowing on this uh, very zoomed out view. So let's uh, move over towards Germany. But as we zoom in, this sounds somewhat warf. Now, as you recall, last time where we were trying to get some stuff finished, we started to get one or two notifications up there. Let's finish them. Now, once again, I'm going to ignore this one. I'm not going to cancel it. We know the whole reason there for Toad Antier or, or, or lack of. Uh, decisions are available. Uh, again, we've, we've, re we've reviewed that. There's nothing there that jumps out as so so far. The, the timeout, we discussed that, that we're never going to cancel those MIFO bills. The Allies are going to do that on our behalf once we become aggressive. Because again, the MIFO bills... Excuse me. I always seem to get sort of the hiccups when I'm doing these, don't I? The MIFO bills are of benefit to us as Germany, so they will cancel them on our behalf. Uh, modify officer call. We've been over that. Military high command. Uh, next one here, modify government political advisor. Let's have a little look actually what that could be. So if we modify as a political advisor, okay, here is a very important uh, decision. Now, if you recall um, in a previous uh, episode, I think it was the last one we did. If not, it was certainly the one before Where are we over here. Uh, sorry, the, the flag itself. If we click on this, we had actually unlocked the four year plan. Because we'd unlocked that, if you take a look, one of the things that we were able to gain is this is this Heimar Schacht guy, whatever he's called as a political advisor. Now, because we've got this guy available to us, if we come over here, remember these three here, these three tabs were a political advisor. We'd already got Bormann in, so we get an additional 15% on the political power. Let's now click on the next one along. And again, you could click here, or you could click here. It literally does the same thing. It's just that we can have three people in totality. Now, all of these advisors are 150 political power. We currently only have 90, with the exception of this Schacht guy, who costs 75. Now, in my opinion, even if he did cost 150 political power, he is still worth getting, because look at those bonuses. Infrastructure, civilian factory, railways, refineries, all of which 10% more quickly for the entire rest of the game very big bonus to have so let's recruit this guy so again 
bang and now he's on board with the whole thing all of those uh all of those things that are taking place under the construction menu are going to take place that much more quickly 10 percent to, to be precise so that was a huge thing to do there and again we've been over these with the exception in this episode of insufficient resources so we'll select that once again, we're still slightly short on steel, slightly short on tungsten. So if we come over to the uh, production, sorry, the construction, I want to get construction and production there, the two menus back to front. If we come over to the uh, construction menu, if we come over to the infrastructure, remember we'd been over this once before, but just to refresh everybody's memory, if we find a state that's producing a lot of steel, so in this case, for example, Saxon, and again, it's a level four of level five. If we upgrade that to a level five, we're going to get an additional eight pieces of steel out of the ground for the reasons we've said before. Better infrastructure, you can have more lorries able to get in and out of Dodge more quickly, which is exactly what we want when we're, we're moving uh, huge quantities of steel around. And of course... Being somewhat short on steel to have an additional eight is good. Again, with the exception of the fact that most of that additional steel once again gets lost to that trade decision. So let's close that. Those of you wondering um, this free trade decision here, do you change this before going to war? The answer is, of course, yes, you do. Because the last thing you want to do when you fight in a war is give away the vast majority of your stuff so if we change back from free trade say to limited exports or, or possibly even a closed economy whatever it happens to be most suitable at the time you may say okay well you're going to be able to hang over most if not all of your resources does that come with a penalty and you say well if you want to view losing 15% uh, bonuses down to just 5% or worse yet nothing at all yeah so we want to use this free trade agreement as much as possible to build ourselves up and once we're built up and we're ready to kick off it's like right we've had what we want so you can all go bugger off because it's uh but it's creek time <laughs> So there is that. So yes, if you were if you were just pondering that question, absolutely the case. All right, same as before then. So let's carry on. Bang. All right, let's pause. Another level of construction done again on or around the twelfth of June. So I know I keep saying this almost every episode, but it's just important for those that are trying to follow along. As long as you're within. You know, a few days, give or take, of where we are, that's fine. If you're looking at this in your sort of December 1936, uh, yeah, you're going to have to, well, I hate to say restart at this late stage, so just try and follow along. And again, every so often, I will try and do nothing for a few days' time, just so that if anybody is uh, slightly behind, uh, can uh, catch up. So let's come over to our research tab and as you see research slot number two has become available to us so let's have a look what's next bonus time look at all these 100 percent bonuses and remember i was saying last episode 100 percent bonus doesn't mean you get the whole thing for free unfortunately although it kind of should it actually means you get the thing for half price which is i still think that's a 50 percent bonus whatever <laughs> so if we hover over this uh, construction level two you can see this is a hundred and uh this would take us 144 days to complete from right now even though it is 0 0.55 years ahead of time as of right now now if we didn't have the 100 percent bonus this would take more like 300 days or nearly 300 days because those 444 days would be doubled that said even though it's ahead of time because it's a massive bonus, uh, you know, 50% off and construction speed is super important as in we can build everything once again. Once this is complete, everything gets built, even 10% more. Well, well, I say everything. Construction speed, factory repair speed. So everything in that department is 10% more quick. So yes, let's do that. Doesn't build the tanks more quickly. That actually is on this side, the improved machine tools. This improved improves the efficiency cap by 10% which means once the factory has been doing what it's doing for a certain amount of time 
at the end of the day it's going to be able to produce 10 percent more stuff than had we not enabled this so yeah bonuses across the board so let's get this one unlocked despite the time penalty and again 144 days uh you could also be very tempted to get this one for the additional 10 percent resources and again the bigger drill whatever you have it this is just uh Bigger cranes uh, let you build stuff more quickly, right? The cement mixer can fit more cement in, whatever it happens to be. So uh, let's go ahead and get that one done. And we'll have a think about what we're going to use our second bonus on as and when that rolls around. Okay, let's press F2. Let's have a little look over there. Uh, we see we've got this little uh, flashing blue cross next to Dernitz because command power... Remember, it needs us, I think it was 15, was it? Or 25, I can't quite remember. Let's have a little look. Uh, so, Dernitz, who is our submarine guy, uh, we've got two uh, traits that we can assign. It's cause going to cost 15 command power, so that was the number I was looking for. We've got a choice between Silent Hunter or Lancer. And what that means is, don't worry about what the names say, just look at the stats. Silent Hunter, torpe Torpedo Reveal Chance, minus 15. Lancer, Torpedo Screen Penetration, plus 25. In other words, uh, Silent Hunter is, you're on an enemy, uh, from our point of view, playing as the Germans, you're on a destroyer, you're on a British destroyer, you're sent to guard a convoy, and your lookout says, oh my goodness, there's enemy torpedo in the water. We can see the bubbles, whatever it happens to be. This reduces the percentage of that happening by 15%. The reason spotting torpedoes is important is, of course, those of you that know 101 naval tactics. If you spot the torpedo, not only can you sort of raise the alarm sooner and try and dodge the torpedo, but you can also follow where those bubbles come from and say, right, he's got to be over there and send your destroyers that away. So, another way of saying this is Silent Hunter is going to increase the likelihood that your submarines survive the attack because it's going to be harder to trace them down. As opposed to Lancer, the torpedoes have a 25% higher chance of getting through the, the screen and hitting their target. So, one is defense, one is attack. Let's look at it like that. Now, you may be tempted to think, oh, well, I, I would like the defense first and maybe attack later. The problem is you can only have one or the other. Now, I, the way I would say is always go for the attack. And here's why. And we're going to go for it. Lancer, boom. The reason is because I can always tell... If we come out of this screen now, we've authorised that. I can always tell my Admiral, as we've seen here, to attack at a low risk. So in other words, this right here is kind of how aggressive or not my subs are going to be. So if I tell my subs to be on a low aggression, they've already got... Another way of saying a low aggression is that they've already got a high defence built in. The difference between this is I can change this just by clicking it, if I so wish... Once I've set the traits to the Admiral, they're there for the rest of the game. So when I want to crank up the aggression with my Admiral, he's already got the trait there raring to go. Now again, we use 15 command power to assign him this. There's another option here that we can give him. And again, it's going to cost another 15 command power to assign this. Torpedo cooldown 25%. Shoot them again, they're not dead yet, is the uh, quote. And I think another way of saying this, although I'm sure somebody may correct me if they feel so, uh, torpedo cooldown, another way of saying that is basically you you fire the torpedo, it misses or, or, or doesn't cause enough damage, whatever it happens to be. This option here basically lets you fire another torpedo from the same torpedo tube 25% quicker than without a uh, torpedo cooldown. What exactly uh, torpedo cooldown means in the real world, I don't know, but I suspect that's what they're getting at. You can only put so many torpedoes through the tube in any amount of time, and this reduces the amount of time that it takes. There's also this torpedo expert uh, option up here. Had we followed the silent hunter option, which would increase the uh, chance of it hitting by 10%. But I actually think 
Being able to fire a torpedo 25% more quickly results in more targets destroyed than been increasing the hit chance by 10%. Uh, just, just my opinion there. So let's go for this as well. And there we go. We've spent up all our command power. And as well, we've given the Admiral uh, everything there that uh, he has available for now. So let's escape. Once again, let's unpause. And hopefully now we're starting to get a little bit of the hang of at least how to play this game in the pre-war setting. We're training things, we're building things, we're recruiting things, we're expanding factories, expanding bases and so forth and so on. Quick check over to the F3 menu, the aircraft menu. Let's go ahead and tra uh, train up another, uh, let's go for another fighter squadron. So we'll get this one here, train. We'll also get a bomber squadron uh, or bomber air wing training. Uh, whether you call these as air wings or squadrons, it's kind of the same thing. It's 100 aircraft or, you know, the only reason the torpedoes got less than 100 is we haven't built them yet. So let's get this uh, one training as well. If we come over to the F2 menu, by the way, look at this. We're going to be full on fuel in less than five years. We see that's in the green. And that's because the uh, aircraft that we had training, or we did have less aircraft training, of course, this may differ now. We've just assigned you two new air wings uh, to begin training. The animation is already underway. So let's unpause. And once again, we're waiting for notifications to roll around. Pause. 1st of July, the bit of a bit of a pause there anyway, as there is every month. We have three dockyards available. Why is that? We'll take a look at this. The two subs that we asked to be built uh, last episode to resupply Dunnets, they have finished. And the two destroyers that were still remaining, they've finished. So now we've only got the two battleships uh, remaining. And we only have, if we take a look over there, one dockyard uh, working on each. Now, it may be tempting to say, oh, well, I want to speed up my production on these battleships. But of course, the problem is, if you take a look here, we're actually short on chromium. And if you take a look, chromium is required for these battleships. Uh, one for this one, one for this one. So if we put two dockyards on this battleship here, let's just uh, demonstrate this. They're going to require two pieces of chromium. But of course, we don't even have enough to go around. We've got one piece of chromium and that's it. That's being used for this battleship. This battleship, although it would like a chromium as well, because we've got a dockyard, doesn't have any available. So it makes more sense to start producing other things that we need. What do we need? You're really going to need destroyers and U-boats as Germany. Those two things. Later on, light cruisers as well. Heavy cruisers, potentially... Um, just depends how heavy you want to go on the Navy, but U-boats, U-boats, U-boats for sure, and destroyers to help defend the existing heavy capital ships that we've got, which are sort of required initially to defend our coastline and subsequently once we start thinking about invading the UK. So for now, let's come over to build new ships. I'm going to assign on a sub. We're going to move these subs to the top priority. And the reason is, once these dockyards start producing battleships, if they're on the lowest priority, which is where I want to keep them, if our dockyards suddenly have to come away from producing these battleships because they need to repair a damaged ship, they're going to the dockyards are going to come back into this list from the top priority and work their way down. In other words... Because we don't already have enough chromium as there is, uh, chromium as there is to complete this, uh, to work on this battleship, this dockyard here may as well work on something else and only come back to this ship once we've got enough. And again, that's going to happen later on in the game, probably when we change that law where 80% of what we're getting is uh, being exported, which of course includes that chromium. So let's go to the sub. I'm going to put, let's say, six dockyards on that U-boat. If we take a look at dockyards at the top there, uh, we've got ten. We're currently using eight of them. Let's put the other two just working on destroyers. And again, these are going to uh, work on the subs here ad nauseum. Yeah, for infinity, 
The only time we're going to change this is basically once we unlocked the new higher level, the higher tech sub. Only then are we going to change this to say, right, finish up on this sub level two and then start work on sub level three. Again, there's a little bit more to it than that. If you get the DLC, I keep saying that, but uh, but this is a great way to start. So let's come over to the destroyers. The uh, In this case, the destroyer two, which was uh, apparently... Uh, 1934 technology okay uh, for the same reason as before we're going to put this as a second priority uh, behind the u-boat and again two dockyards and there we go all the dockyards have take have been taken up producing things in this order now i'm actually going to set seven to work on the sub even though we've got none available and that's because like we were saying, there was this issue with the battleship down here and not having the chromium. So what's going to happen now is when we unpause the game, things are going to continue as they were. At some point, a naval ship that we've got doing exercises is going to get damaged. It's going to come into port. The dockyard is going to repair that, uh, that sub as the highest priority or whatever the ship happens to be. And it's going to take the lowest priority dockyard, in this case the battleship or whatever ship you've got at the bottom, it's going to take that dockyard away and it's going to set it to repair. Once it's repaired, the dockyard is going to return into this list, but it's not going to go down there. It's going to go up there where we've got this spare slot. And so that's another important thing to understand and why it's important to put highest priority things at the top of the list, lowest priority at the bottom. The factories prefer the top. The resources, if there's not enough to go around, prefer the top. And that applies both to Navy as well as aircraft, as well as, uh, you know, your, your infantry stuff here at the top of the list. So there's that. So let's press escape. And again, ports, uh, unpause, should we say. Okay, notification once again, so we'll just quickly pause, check it's nothing unusual. We're able to unlock the theorist. Now, again, just to refresh ourselves, that's this one here. And remember, we're trying to get the 200 political power to get Heinz Guderian. We're not really interested in these 100 uh, experience or 100 uh, political power uh, advisors. We want the we, we want the top one there, the Heinz Guderian. And again, because of the advantages of the best, we've been over this. Uh, there are some reasons why you may wish to have some of the other ones, but certainly not in the early stages. Having a fifteen percent discount on war on the doctrines is hugely important, and I can't wait to show you that as and when uh, we get to that uh, point. Okay, back to the uh, F one for the army. Let's unpause. Boom, pause. Here we go. The Spanish Civil War has broken out. What will this mean for Spain? So although we've paused the game, let's slow time right down to just one green bar. What will this mean for Spain indeed? It means that uh, Spain is now in civil war and we're going to go and help out. And again, this is what uh, happens in 36. So if we just come away from Germany at the minute and take a look at Spain... You see, we've got these two colours, the lighter and darker colour, and this is the, the two factions that are at civil war. For reasons that will become clear later, but basically we want to get into their good books is, is, is uh, reason enough right now. We're going we're, we're to assist the darker of the two colours, which is uh, nationalist Spain versus Republican Spain. So this uh, darker colour here... We're going to offer to, uh, you know, basically help them win. Now, it's not just that we want to get in their good books, although that's already reason enough to perhaps help them, especially if we're not actively involved in a war ourselves, which we're not as of yet. The main reason over and above that is we're going to gain experience. And experience in this game is so important. And I don't mean experience like you and me playing and we get good at the game. I mean experience like... The generals get good at commanding their armies. The armies get better. The generals get better. The air force gets better. It all gets better. So to have a small side engagement, as in this Spanish Civil War kicking off, where the outcome of it 
although we ideally want the nationalists to win, but you know, it doesn't matter too much whether they do or they don't. But the fact is, because we're able to gain experience no matter who wins, is 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 great, right? And I would say it's almost for free. Of course, it's not because uh, you know we're we're going to suffer with attrition and Panzers are going to lose and all so on and so forth. Um, so what we're going to do is right click on so first off make sure you're in the uh, army mode so come over to your f1 we're going to right click onto the darker area and we're going to scroll down this list until we find uh, this option here send volunteers so select to send volunteers and you can see before we select anything else we currently have zero divisions engaged in the, the shenanigans down here, the Civil War. We are restricted to a maximum of two divisions. And that number is limited by how many divisions we have in total. So if we had even more divisions at home, for whatever reason, we would be able to send more than two divisions. Well, remember, we had some divisions in training, right? The, and uh, the training's on an ongoing basis. We can actually kick out our divisions from training early. Now, they're not going to be necessarily good enough to fight or equipped enough or all the rest of it, but they will still count as a division. So if we can have more divisions at home, on paper at least, they'll be able, we'll be able potentially to send three divisions to assist instead of two and obviously we're going to gain a lot more experience by having three divisions instead of the two. So let's try it. And if not, we'll have to come back. So let's press escape, escape to come out of that menu. Let's come back home here in Germany. And if we come under our recruitment menu up there, we're going to select that. Now look at all these infantry divisions here. We've got six of them that are basically ready to go. So... Most of them are nearly ready. This one here is half ready. But see where we've got this flag here. Deploy all lines instantly. We can, So what that's going to do is going to say, right, I don't care that you haven't finished basic training. Just get on out. We need them there now. You know, perhaps more uh, recently. Oh, I say recently. It was still like 50, 60 years ago now. But the Vietnam War in America that's uh, uh, somewhat more recent. You know, the, the, the training to become a Marine or whatever it was, was however many weeks long. And as soon as the war really gets going, it's like, right, we're going to do the same thing, but in less weeks. It, it's so that we can get more people out there more quickly. Same thing what's going on here. So let's deploy these guys. And if we just come out of that menu, these have all appeared here now, all six divisions. So again, if I select this, we'll actually get a breakdown. Now take a look at this. They're all novice, and you can see the uh, this one up here is is very much so. So this division is obviously, I mean, in an emergency, could they fight? Yes, but far from ideal. So what I'm going to do is just quickly give these divisions out. So let you know this Witzelbomb guy, and if you recall, he's the one who's ho uh, holding the line between mainland Germany and Poland. I'm just going to be just lazily give all six of them to him. So division selected, left click, right click onto Witzelbomb, bang. And then what he's going to do is going to bring them all over to the line and he's going to carry them on training and they'll wind up as the Silver Star. I am hoping that we now have enough divisions uh, to tip the balance. But uh, just before we do, I'm going to come over to the recruit uh, menu here. Same thing going on with this Panzer division. 95% equipment. You see, still slightly short on tanks, but that's okay. Uh, what's going to happen now once we start the Civil War? If you remember, we set reinforcement priority high... But we have here for the C for the um Yeah, there's I'm sure there's one missing here. Uh, operations. Perhaps that's with the DLC. But basically, because the reinforcements is on high, what's gonna happen is once we start losing tanks in the Spanish Civil War, which we will as and when new tanks get produced in the factory, they will actually come to us in Spain first before they fulfill uh, the priority here, even though here is still short, as you can see. 
213 out of 240. So we're going to leave this ticking over. If we were to forcibly deploy this division now, what would happen is as and when new tanks get produced, there would be an equal priority for this division here as would be our divisions in Spain. So it's important we leave these guys training for as long as possible. Unless, like up there, we were trying to game the system in some some way. So let's press escape to come out of this. Let's come back over to uh, this mainland here. Right click and once again come over to send volunteers. Now unfortunately we're still limited to two divisions. But we're very close to being able to have three. So once those next few infantry divisions are either sli even slightly trained, we'll kick them out of training and hopefully we'll be able to send three divisions over at that time. However, that's not going to stop me from getting my first two divisions stuck into battle right now. Unfortunately, because Rommel has three, in order to send two divisions over, what I'm going to have to do is just before we uh, agree to do this, going to have to come over to Germany say, look, Rommel, you're going to have to temporarily give us one of these divisions and then we'll get stuck in. So what I'm going to do is just select one of the divisions, doesn't matter which one, let's take the uh, top tank division and I'm going to temporarily assign a new army with that one division and we're just going to leave that army there. doesn't matter that it's not doing anything. All that matters is Rommel has two divisions uh, because that's our limit when it came to Spain. So let's deselect that again. Let's now once again right click onto Nationalist Spain, send volunteers and now let's look in this little menu for Rommel. There he is. He's got his two panzer divisions. We can send up to two. That's all good. So let's select that. Fantastic. And so with that uh let's go and send them over um, i'm used to an air option up here again the dlc just drastically changes some of these things and let's set okay is what it is uh let's send them over now when we unpause uh, rommel and his two panzer divisions are going to be transferred uh, over so they're going to come through the sea uh, we won't actually see them for two or three days. It, we, we just have to wait for them to get there, but that's fine. But just know that's what's happening. So let's unpause. So there they go. Nationalist Spain has allowed us to send a volunteer force to help them fight in their war. Our troops are on the way to join the struggle. Okay. If we take a look up here, we get that weird looking icon. Volunteer forces are in transfer. We're sending two divisions over. They're expected to to arrive at 30th of July. So actually it's going to take two weeks, uh, not two days as I thought. And again, if we if we take a look here, we can uh, get a vague idea of the battle that's taking place. And again, we're going to be assisting the darker country. So this is actually the first battle or the first time we'll get to experience battle. So we're going to increase speed just a little bit and just be sure not to whiz by the date because it's very important we get uh, in control of that as soon as we can. While we're waiting for things to tick over, something else that we've not yet looked at uh, in any of these tutorials, if you look in the extreme corner of the right there, you've got this picture of the globe together with how much uh, global tension there is. In this case, uh, there's about 6% global war tension of which we have generated 4% uh, or 4.6% towards that. And I think most of that was because of the Rhineland. There are other countries that basically require there to be so much tension before they're able to do something. And I think America is one such country. So America can't just start declaring war on people because of the restrictions by their government. That said, if other countries are hard at war and there's various things going on, i.e. Pearl Harbor, all of a sudden America has the excuse it needs to enter war. All right, let's pause. We've reached the 30th of July while I've been waffling on and the two divisions that we have sent to Spain have arrived in Galicia, let's call it. Okay. And we've also, by sheer chance, uh, unlocked this uh, order key at the same time. And again, days may vary. Okay. Go to the very top of the screen before we get embroiled in the war. Let's get this thing sorted out. National focus. We've unlocked this one. 
Let's continue down the right edge of this screen and get the uh, Herman going Verka online. Take a look at the bonuses. This is going to give an additional two civilian factories in Ostmark, Hinterprommen, as well as Moorsland. It's also going to give us the two additional building slots for free and then fill those with uh, factories. Another way of saying this is once we've researched this, we're going to get six additional civilian factories overall, which is, of course, much quicker than trying to individually build six factories, at least at this early stage of the game. So that's a very good uh, direction to go at this stage. And some of you may have already realised if we carry on, we're going to get an extra research slot, which is absolutely the case. So let's carry on. OK. Before we unpause the game, you may say, well, hang on a minute. What's happened to, to Rommel? And the answer is, if we take a look on the right hand of the screen there, we've got German theatre in the corner. That's been there pretty much the whole time. Immediately below that, if we if we select on the box there, we see we've got the Spanish Volunteers. Now, we could rename this at any time. Uh, it doesn't really matter. What does matter is if you are playing with more than one theatre, which uh, currently we are, you've got this cog here, which allows you to prioritise which, you know, if there's a limited amount of equipment or fuel or whatever it happens to be, we can prioritise it. And what's hugely important right now is that the Spanish get the high priority. Why? For the same reason that's, that we've said. We're short on guns, short on equipment, whatever it happens to be. And there isn't enough to go around Spain, or at least our, our, our campaign within Spain. In other words, Rommel is going to get first dibs and then everybody else second. So that's absolutely uh, the way to go in this regard. Uh, so with that set... Let's zoom in. Something else to notice, Rommel's portrait is in black and white. What that means is he is the commander in charge of the two divisions, but for whatever reason, he hasn't shown up yet. So the panzers are there, the divisions are ready to fight, Rommel is not. And again, there's why there's a discrepancy, I, I guess he gets his own way down there. He doesn't go on the troop transport, but he gets a chauffeur driven. I don't know. I, I, I'm just talking to one at this point. But the fact is, it takes him longer to get there. So the bonuses that Rommel brings to the game, in other words, for an additional 10% attack, uh, the supply consumption bonuses, all the rest of it, are not going to be in play. So when it comes to attacking it's probably best to wait while rommel gets there but it doesn't stop us moving our panzers into position and because this is quite a forestry area it actually takes our panzers quite a long time to do that so if you remember we've got our z key to create a front line what we're going to do is create a front line between spain here and this little area to the north now, we can micro a very specific portion of the front line, and this is a great opportunity, because if we take a look, if we was to draw a front line, let's just do it. Select Rommel, press Z, and click this area here. This is a huge front line for just two panzers to cover. Now, I get it. It's not just the two panzers. We've got this whole Spanish Civil War going on. That is, of course, true. Um, but it would make far more sense to give our panzers a smaller area of front line so they have a better chance of breaking through. Now, there are many that argue, and I, and I would be one of them, that says it's important to keep this civil... You don't want to try and wrap this civil war up quite quickly. You want to let it drag out a bit so that the experience has more time to build up. I'm certainly in agreement with that, and we can use the majority of the war further down here to do just that. The problem is uh, we want to nip this uh, little attack up here in the buds, not least because we require these harbours to help supply our armies. If we come over here, we've actually got a huge way for supply to come, and you can run out of supply, which is never a good thing. So in order to do this, remember what we were saying, right click on that bin to delete all the orders. OK, uh, let's uh, create a, a front line on a segment. And in order to do this, 
we once again press the Z key to draw that front line. And this time, instead of left clicking, we're going to right click and drag. So right click dragging is an unusual thing for us to do in a, in a, on a PC, but we're going to do it on this case. So we're going to draw, right click and drag along the front line how long we want the front to be. So if I, and again, just watch what I'm doing here, then we'll do it properly. So if I start right click here and then just hold right mouse button down, I can drag it to here, to here, to here. Now you can see there that that front line turned red. In other words, Rommel say, look, there's no way I can effectively have a front line that big. And, and that's obvious. Yeah, it's far too big. So for simplicity's sake, let's right click on the bin, delete all of those orders and start again. This time we're going to press Z and make sure you follow along. We're going to start the right click at the very top edge of this dotted line and we're just going to bring it down until it turns yellow. OK, so there it's yellow. That's already one step too far. Let's bring it back until the tile's green. Great. Now if we unpause now the panzers are going to go to that front line and they're just going to wait there which is what we want while rommel rolls up onto the scene there's one more thing that we want to do and notice here rommel is not beneath a field marshal we may as well get the field marshal involved because remember the bonuses stack so with rommel selected Let's right click onto there and now Rommel is beneath this particular army group, which in this case is army group 2. Remember army group 1's back at home. We now select a new field marshal and again scroll to the top. Now we've got two options and in my opinion there's only one clear choice for this. The top one there, field marshal Gunter von Kluger. He's got a bonus of three when it comes to supply consumption versus two and a bonus of four on attack versus three. There's only one way to go, right? So let's get Kluger in. And remember, this now stacks with Rommel, or at least once Rommel rolls onto the scene. So that's now nicely set up. Now, I'm sure there was an issue back in 2023 when I did this tutorial where the Air Force was unable to assist Rommel, at least without the DLC. So I'm going to see if that's uh, still an issue. So just bear with me one sec. I'm going to come back over to Germany. Just one sec. Press F3 to come to the air menu. I'm going to select the two uh, aircraft involved. And can I fly them over there? No, I can't. And if I press F1 to the Spanish volunteers can I set press F3 to select the air can I right click them onto Rommel yes I can okay fantastic right let me unpack all of that uh, uh, so let's just uh, hold the air wing cancel that okay Back to the F1 menu then, back to the Spanish Volunteers down here, which in this case is Rommel. We can have a, a few, for, I believe it's two airings in total. So it's either two groups of fighters or one group of fighters, one group of bombers. You could have two groups of bombers, but of course, without any fighter escort, they're just going to get shot down. So I'm going to go, as we said earlier, the fighters and the Stukas. Now... In order for these planes to get involved in this Spanish Civil War, for some reason we can't just manually fly them to this airbase and have them help out. Why? I don't know, but we can't. So in order to get them uh, stuck in, what we do now is press F3. Remember, F3 is the air menu. We come over to southern Germany. That's where we parked these uh, two aircraft. So we'll click on the airbase. That selects both the fighter as well as the Stuka there. What we're then going to do is tell them the missions they're going to do at the very top. So air superiority, which is for the fighter. And then the next one along, we've got close air support. And that's for the uh, Stuka. In other words, the fighters are going to go looking for planes to shoot down. Uh, the Stukas are going to look for enemy forces or enemy tanks uh, uh, to take out. Now, if we write with, without doing anything else, and again, we've still got these uh, aircraft selected, 
we're going to right click on top of Rommel. And now look at this. Rommel now gains control of both the fighter as well as the Stuka. This is hugely important to understand in this game because we're going to use this throughout the rest of the game. This way you don't need to manually move all of your air around the map all the time depending on where your soldiers are. You can give so and so many air wings over to the generals and they'll move them wherever they think best. They don't always get it 100% right but they certainly do it better than just getting bogged down in endless micros. So with that said and done, let's press escape. Come back to the F1 menu. Let's zoom in. And I think level three is a good place to go. Let's unpause. And we'll witness our tanks rolling out. Rommel's still not there yet, but that's okay. Pause. All right, a few days later in this case, 1st of August. Our tanks are in position at the front line. Now, they are not currently engaging in combat, despite what these soldiers are doing. They're just there on the front line. So what we're going to do now is issue them the order to attack. And this is the first time we've done this in this tutorial. And by goodness, on episode 7, it's about time we got round to attacking something. So we're going to select Rommel, or at least Rommel's portrait. It's still black and white, so we're going to wait. It says he won't be able to give us the buffs for another 22 days. We'll probably make a start without Rommel in that case. Now remember, the only two controls you need in this game are Z key to draw the front line and X key to attack. We've already drawn our front line that's here, so that's the Z key taken care of. We now need the plan of attack. That is the X key. So that's this one here, the so-called offensive line, or as I prefer, X. Oops. Select Rommel, press... Hey? Okay. <laughs> Let's just press the offensive button. I... Okay, it's the same thing. I think I was doing the same thing. So with Rommel selected, let's press X. There we go. And what we're going to do now is draw where we want these guys to go. Now, you don't draw a line from here to where you want it to be. Instead, you draw a line, if you imagine where you want the, f the next front line to be. And again, it's a right-click drag. So let's say I want the front line to be here. Right-click drag, let go. And as you can see there... The plan is now to take this front line from here to this line here, okay? What you do not do, let me just delete that order, is get a front line and say, I want you to go from here to here, okay? That's not the way to do it. You, you draw, you've got the front line here and you want the new front line to be here. And so you draw the line there, not like that and so once again copy along if you haven't done this offensive line and we're going to go over by this harbor and the immediate tile adjacent to it okay let go all right something like that doesn't matter if yours doesn't look 100% like that just ballpark like that now what we're going to do is set Rommel even though he's not there yet we're going to tell him begin attacking also notice here this field marshal. He's got a, a flashing uh, blue square. We need 20. We've got 20 command power up top there. As we know, we need 15 to get the up the, the updates. Let me just uh, uh, mute my phone. There we go. Beg your pardon for that. So we're going to assign this field marshal because, of course, there's no time like now when the war's on to get all the extra traits, at least, that we can. So let's select on the plus there. And again, we're down to this option. Organization first, charismatic. We've been over this before. Let's go ahead and go for the uh, charismatic option on this uh, occasion. So let's select that. Let's select OK. Let's come out of that. And let's unpause. Let's watch what happens. Oh, just before we unpause, I happen to have this political option. I'll tell you what. Let's just tell it to go. And we'll slow it right down. And let's unpause. We'll deal with the modified government in a bit. Right. Boom. The action has taken place. Now, I'm going to pause it just really briefly to point out something here. We have this, uh, the animations of the attacks, that's okay. And we've got this little 
in this case green ball with the number 65 that 65 is representative of and if we click on it we can have a look here this graph up here and it's not how many days as you can see there they reckon it's going to take another 61 days i actually hope it's much quicker than that but at least instantly uh, it's another 61 days that 65 basically says the battle is 65 percent complete the reason it's already that much complete is the infantry divisions have been fighting for a certain amount of time before we even got there another thing to look at over here just turn that down just temporarily we've got this battle uh taking place on this particular tile here where this ball is we've got this infantry division on our side okay so that's the uh the the spanish uh infantry we've got an enemy infantry over there that's you know that's the uh, republican side i believe it was and then We've also got our panzer. This is so it's uh, infantry plus panzer, which is ours, versus just an infantry. So already we've got an advantage. We've got Rommel commanding our side. The other side actually doesn't have a commander. So already we've got a bonus in that regard. And then also take a look in reserves. The enemy has nothing in reserve. In other words, they have to keep fighting with this one infantry division. And when that infantry division loses, they're going to fold. They've got no choice because there's nothing else to bring to the party. We, however, have another panzer division in reserve. And remember when I was saying there was that reinforce rate bonus? At some point, this panzer is going to join into the, uh, into the party. And when he does, our ability to attack this enemy is going to be even quicker because, of course, the one infantry division will have three enemy divisions attacking them of which two are panzers so let's uh, escape let's escape let's uh, press space and we'll continue to watch this evolve i'll let it go till around the uh, 5th of august and then at that point uh, we'll take a look at the government so i'm just going to press the plus to increase the speed and we're going to watch what's happening here look at that percentage of battle ticking away there 80 percent 90 and there we go 100 percent. so let's pause it there which just so happens to be on the 5th of august as well which is great but as you can see the enemy infantry division there is retreating having been um you know we basically inflicted a lot of casualties and our panzers have now moved up and as you can see they're already attacking on the next tile which is 83 percent complete thanks to all of these uh from our point of view, allies, uh, infantry divisions. Okay. And all of this is taking place despite the fact that Rommel is yet to roll up onto the scene. So I think Rommel's going to be chuffed with how we've done without. Now, I really want to continue this little engagement, and we will. We've just got a couple of notifications to deal with, and this is where multitasking in this game is important. Don't get task saturated doing one thing. I realize sometimes when we're doing the tutorial, we've got no choice but to do that. But again, hit space bar. Okay, this is ongoing. I need to really take care of this to make sure that nothing starts going wrong and I take too many losses, whatever. Let's deal with these notifications. Again, these we know we're going to ignore. Modify government. Let's come over there. Right. Very important now because we are dealing in a military engagement primarily with the uh, tanks or the army. If I just make myself disappear, military staff here, we've got Air Force, Navy, and last of all, or, or first of all, if we're going from the left, Chief of Army. Now, if I select on this icon here, take a look at some of these, right? We've got this guy here, which gives us army organization... We've got this guy here, which basically uh, division training time is reduced. Um, and if we take a look at this guy here, Franz Halder, army offense, division attack plus 10%. So obviously to have an additional 10% attack, whether you're talking, uh, no, no matter what army it is, whether it's infantry, whether it's panzers, whether it's motorized, he's going to give us an additional 10% attack bonus. 
Now, I think that's a really good bonus to have. The problem is we also require 20 command power as well as the 100 political power. Currently, we only have 6 command power. Now, I could just wait for that to fill up, but actually, I'm going to make more use of something a little more urgently with the political power. So let's come over here to Material Designer, something we've not yet looked at. If we select this, we've got three options, just like we did with the IG Farben lot. We've got, uh, bring myself back home for the last few minutes of the tutorial. We've got Rhine Metal Artillery. So he's going to, well, increase the research speed of there. We've got the Mauser one, which is infantry equipment, you know, researching the rifles and the support equipment in that regard. And then we've got Opel, which is Vauxhall in Germany. I don't know why they had a different name. I always remember when I was younger going to Germany, seeing the exact same cars that we had over here, but instead of the Vauxhall with the Vauxhall logo, they would say Opel on them, and they would have the uh, like a lightning uh, l symbol on, on the logo, although I think they've since done away with that. But in any case, that increases research speed for things like trucks. Go for the artillery man because artillery is a huge bonus to have because let's just click on it and get that squared away. That 15%, don't forget if we uh, have a quick look over on artillery, applies for flak as well as regular artillery as well as the anti-tank. I mean this whole thing comes under the bracket as you see there of artillery. So that's a huge bonus to have and then absolutely next time the you know, we get that political power back. Hopefully we'll have the command power in place to assign that advisor for the army. Also, just before we unpause, if we take a look at this, we've got some unassigned divisions. Let's select on that. In this case, this panzer division that was in training. Fantastic. Now, coming over to Germany, look at this. All of our divisions have disappeared. Well, actually, they haven't. It's just because we're still in Spanish theatre mode. So this is where you've got to be a little bit careful. You don't start sending divisions accidentally across to where you don't mean to. So the easiest way to ensure that that doesn't happen is press the escape button, make sure nothing is selected, and then come over here and select the there to select whichever one you want in this case germany or press escape uh let's go back to the spanish ones okay so press escape make sure nothing there is selected let's select on the german theater there and now we can once again press escape now that we've got the germany area selected we can get grab this uh, division here at berlin and we can give it to a suitable uh, general. Uh, so I think what I'm going to do with this Panzer Division selected is we're going to start and create our second armoured division that we're actually going to use offensively, which is obviously a little ways down the road yet, but, you know, let's start getting things set up. So with this Panzer Division, once again, create a new army. There we go. Click on the portrait to assign a commander. And once again, from the top of the list, most being most suitable, uh, especially someone like Guderian or Manstein again with that uh, Panzer bonus. In fact, let's get Guderian because he's already got the Panzer leader selected. Uh, so let's get that guy uh, in control of this division. Now, where do we want this division to go? Well, the answer is um, he's going to help us once we get uh, going with Poland. Now, we're still in 1936, so this is a ways off. But in my opinion, it doesn't hurt to get them into position. So what we'll do is we'll tell Heinz, you know what? Do a front line. And again, this is where the right click drag comes into place. Just do that little area there where Germany borders Poland right there. And once we unpause, he's going to take his panzer up there and that's going to be fine. Now we could set Heinz Guderian training with his panzer and ordinarily I would say yes because of course we need to get this up to the silver bar. Because of the ongoing conflict in Spain, the fact that oil is required for that, we've only got so much. We don't want to uh, lose tanks to attrition in training when they're needed to resupply uh, in Spain and all that good stuff. We're just going to set uh, this guy sitting there doing nothing. Okay. Let's come away from that 
before we nip back to Spain, let's come over to the F2 menu, which is Navy. Let's have a quick look what's going on here. Uh, the surface fleet guy, nothing is going on, but everybody has what they need. Coming over to the uh, U-boat guy, nothing is going on, but everything has what they need. Also, take a look lower right there. We've got one or more ships in reserve. And in this case, a solitary sub at Vesa Emps ready to go. Now, because our Admiral has already got two flotillas with 10 subs in, it's now time to start creating our third flotilla. So come on over here, select the solitary sub. We're going to right click on to the Admiral to tell the submarine, hey, you're going to go work for the uh, Admiral Dunnett. So let's right click. And now we see the submarine is over here in a brand new flotilla. The problem is there is only one sub in this flotilla so far. We need there to be 10. So if we select the Admiral, select his new flotilla here. Select the task composition editor like we've done before. We're going to up this from just the one all the way to, you guessed it, 10. OK, and so subsequent submarines that roll off the production line will automatically fulfill the requirements there. OK, let's escape that. Let's come over to the air menu, F3, have a quick look what's going on over there. And of course, the training taking place over here in Germany. Now, look at these bombers. They've trained up. Great. They've got the silver level. So what we're going to do is stop the training because they're done. I'm now going to fly them away from Berlin. Now, there is no tactical advantage from having them in Berlin versus any other airbase, at least not now because we're not at war. However, because just in my little mind, in my little brain, it's like it's easier for me to train all the aircraft at the same airbase so I don't forget and then move them away. I like to train them all at Berlin and move them away. That's all it is. Just the limitations of what's in my little noggin. So with that said, this guy we're going to send away um, anywhere but. And again, to think, right, we're probably going to roll over Poland first. So they may be, you know, to, to send these bombers to an airbase that's not a million miles away from the Polish border is probably not a bad idea. So how about this? This airbase here is right on the line. It can hold up to 1,200 planes. Now we've told it to stop training. Let's right click and send the air. Excuse me, send the bomber that way. The other one is this aircraft here, this fighter aircraft. And as you can see, it's like 90 uh, odd percent onto that next level. The only thing holding it back is, of course, once in a while you'll get a plane crashing. And when that plane crashes, despite the fact that it's training, You'll now have to wait for a new pilot and a new plane, and then the experience level is always going to drop a little bit before it goes up again. Just to prevent that happening, I'm actually going to stop these guys from training. And again, just that one air wing, we're also going to fly that. Why not send it over to the same airbase? Let's hit escape. Once again, let's select Berlin. And now I'm just going to choose an entirely new air wing, perhaps this one here that's still a novice that's got 100 aircraft. We'll get those guys training. OK, and again, in an ideal world, I just have the whole lot training. But the fact is we do not have enough oil at this stage. Now all of that's done. Let's go back to the F1 menu. Let's once again click on this over here next to Spanish volunteers. And we'll go back to Spain. Still at level three on the speed. And we'll let this play out until, I don't know, let's just say the, I don't know, let's go the 10th of August and then that will wrap it up for this episode. And again, don't get too concerned with, oh, my tanks are still a tile or two further back than yours or my tanks have actually gotten further ahead than yours. There is a, always a degree of randomness in this game over and above the exact odds. So you've got the exact this percent, this percent, this percent. On top of that is a, a degree of randomness. So no two games will ever be exactly alike. So you can see that this attack's going pretty well. We're actually up to the 13th of August. So forget what I said about only playing for so and so far. Oh, 
let's see if we can get this naval yard. You see, let's pause it right there. So on this particular example, you can see there's actually a red circle. And that's basically saying, as it stands, we're losing. Now you can see, the enemy has got two divisions that we're attacking, plus a third in reserve. Well, how come it's suddenly got three divisions? Well, if you remember, previously the enemy was further over to the left. We've actually pushed them back and pushed them back. And because the enemies had to retreat, it, it's in like a concertina effect where you get the same number of guys in a smaller area. Suddenly there's more of them providing resistance in that same area. And so that's what's going on there. Um, and we're only attacking currently with one division. And that's because our second panzer division is actually opened up on a second attack we see because we've actually got two i'm gonna say it we've got two balls <laughs> well we've got one red ball and one green ball don't you dare cut that up and make a separate video out of me saying that because it's gonna make me look ridiculous but in any case uh this attack further to the south is going much better there are four divisions on the go including our panzer division versus three and so you can guarantee that once we win this fight, which looks like we're going to, all of these divisions are going to continue attacking the enemy there. Hopefully we can grab this harbour. So let's unpause the Olympic Games. So let's pause once again. Every time there's a message there, just pause so that you don't miss anything. It's kind of an unwritten standard thing in this game. Uh, so it's basically, oh, we did the 1936 uh, Summer Olympics, which happened to have been held in Berlin, Germany. How very nice. We have shown our best side to the world. Jawohl! All right, let's carry on. Looks like a few things turning green here. And I think actually, because as you can see, this battle is not going to be quite as quick as they were a little earlier on. This is going to be a great way to end this episode. Episode number seven is going to be signing out right now as we pause on the 20th of August, 1936. Battle has been commencing quite nicely. So you know what to do if you haven't already. Hit that like button and then escape. Save your game as, uh, let's just call it uh, Germany Part uh, 7. By the end of it, I'm just going to be calling it uh, P7 or P8 probably. But in any case, do whatever works for you. And until next time, wherever in the world you may be, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. Take care, my friends. Bye-bye.